Hey everyone, so I finally got around to upgrading to Ryzen 3000 from my old i7 6700K. Uh, the cores, the four cores, eight threads were just not enough for stable frame rates in Cyberpunk, and it seemed, it feels a little bit like a side grade, like a, like a non-essential upgrade, but at the same time, even running an RX 5700, which I'm, I cannibalized from my, my old rig, I noticed the GPU usage dropping, like what, especially during free roam in busy areas, even on medium crowd density. So even though like most people would say, if you're gaming, upgrade the GPU first, uh, at least for my specific scenario with the settings I was running, it's the CPU that was causing me to drop under 60 FPS, not the GPU. And upgrading the GPU would get me higher maximums and higher averages, but where where there's like lots of NPCs and and CPU heavy workloads, uh, the 6700K just wasn't enough. So basically, I've cannibalized my old rig. I took out the RX 5700, uh, two sticks of RAM because the old rig is still going to be functional. Uh, I'll just be throwing in a weaker GPU for my son. So I took two sticks of RAM out. I was running four sticks of it's it's actually DDR4 3600 megahertz, but my even though my board supported it, my 6700K memory controller was not strong enough to run much past 3000. Like it had a lot of stability issues that were just even really minor stability where the system would run perfectly except for like one game where it would have strange FPS drops. I just could not get it stable above 30 uh, 3000 megahertz. Like 3000 was rock stable and 3200 to 3600 were just iffy. So at least the, the part of the reasoning behind getting the 3600 in the first place was just so that when I do finally upgrade, I would have some fast memory for Ryzen. So I had the choice between, I could have saved a little bit more and gone for the 5600X, but looking at benchmarks and for the GPU I'm running, which is not a top end like RTX 3080, it did not make sense to pay double the price for a 5600X. Like a lot of people are saying, get the 5600X, um, it's the best value. It's not good value right now. It's actually really poor value unless you're doing esports gaming at 1080p or maybe 1440p low settings uh, to hit really high frame rates. That's where it could be good value, but at the same time, you're not going to get double the FPS over an RX 3600, uh, RX, a Ryzen 3600. Uh, it's, it's definitely not worth double the price, at least for me. So I chose to go with the 3600, as you can see here. I don't know if this is clear. And I was also choosing between B550 and B450. But the main issue there is, again, it's another like almost over 50 bucks for the more expensive board. And the main benefit, apart from stronger VRM, which is only good for a really high-end CPU, is the connectivity for PCIe devices, which I do want to go, a full, I did want to go full NVMe, but my budget didn't allow it. And if I'm going NVMe Gen 4, that's where the B550M would allow me to run double NVMe at decent bandwidth. So I'd be getting like 3000 Mbps to or, or higher uh, speeds. But because of pricing, which is really bad right now, like to get a Gen 4 NVMe here in Philippines is actually double the price as well. I would have ended up going with two good value Gen 3 NVMe's. And in that case, if I'm not fully taking advantage of B550, why go it? And B450 still got a pretty, uh, you know, a really good VRM. It's more than capable as long as I've got airflow. And for now, I'm just going to run one of my old, this is my game drive as the OS drive. And later on, I'll just fiddle around and swap it over to NVMe when I have more budget. So this is just to get it up and running, really, so I can start doing some benchmarks and testing again with the 3600 and... 5700 because all my videos are a good direct comparison because the main thing I'm upgrading here is the CPU and the memory hopefully I can get it running at a higher speed but everything else will be the same so my well not it's not really much everything else it's just the GPU it'll be the same so it'll be like you could directly compare at least what this CPU upgrade is getting me and you can compare the older video cyberpunk performance to to what this thing can do so yeah, I just decided to share this because I'll be doing the build and one thing I wanted to, to record and share with everyone is how the build goes. Like not just like a build log where it's like there's some music and 
you know, you see, you see it getting put together and the next thing you know, it's up and running. I'm, I want to show all the configuration side of it. So a lot of you, I've not a lot of users, but I've seen people complain, say that they were fine with Intel. They went to Ryzen. They had so many issues with Ryzen. They went back to Intel. And for me, I think it's just user error, uh, unless they had really bad luck with, with DOA parts, like parts that are not functioning properly from purchase. Um, I don't think it's going to be that difficult to get Ryzen 3600 running. And this is a Philippines tray CPU. So it's got local three years warranty with Kello Philippines and Shopee. And this was from a, another Shopee online store, cash on delivery called Sher, Sher Shop, Sherman Shop. Uh, I was also on Shopee, but you know, it arrived. It looks like it's in good condition. It doesn't look used, but there is a bit of like solder residue around the CPU socket. It's a bit weird. But hopefully, no issues. And then I've just got a GM650 Gold uh, Seasonic and a Gamax 400 Pro. So we'll see how all that goes and we'll see if I can get it working for a shot because that's one thing I'm interested in is, is there really going to be that much teething issues like for five years being with in Intel? And I can't, my last Ryzen build, um, AMD build was a uh, Athlon 64 4000 when I was like, it's like, uh, 15 years ago now. I feel so old. Yeah, it was like 15 years ago. So a single core Athlon 64 going over to and skipping a step. And then I was with Intel from like Core 2 Duo onwards. So anyway, I'm just going to record this and you can see how I do my builds. Like obviously every YouTuber, PC, you know, especially the professionals, they've all got their own tips and advice. And I've just been building the way I've been doing it the same way for however many years now. Um, pretty standard, like I don't think I do anything special. So my tower is a Rakalia MATX because there was no point getting a full ATX. I was disappointed though because they don't really make this public. Like they don't emphasize on this, but the big difference between the Rakalia MATX version and full ATX version is this thing is fake. And this... It actually pissed me off a lot because they don't really make it a point. Uh, they don't put it in the description or anything or like a little, you know, a little note with a, you know, a little asterisk to tell, tell users. In the full size version, this thing can, is actually magnetic and the whole grill comes off. So you can easily access the fan area and install fans or clean them, like clean the mesh. And on the MATX version, it's all one piece of plastic part of the front panel. So there's no magnetic trick here. You can't, you can't magnet this off. And that kind of defeats, almost completely defeats the purpose of going to Rackley in the first place. Because I think that's like the strongest feature is the front magnetic mesh on the full ATX version and the hinge side door, which at least it's got that at the very least. But yeah, I was kind of pretty annoyed when I, because I didn't realize it at first, like I, it, it's not really described that it has it, but it doesn't say it doesn't have it. And if you just get the Heli, if you've had the Heli a full ATX, or if you've been watching reviews on it, and you decide, oh, I'll just go the smaller version because it's MATX, you think it's exactly the same. It's not the same. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, all one piece, and I haven't opened this obviously, so this is the first time. But you can actually see the case. It's a it's a budget case based in the Philippines, but I think there's also another. It goes by another name in Malaysia, like it's like a Dominator. I don't know. But basically, this is one of the best value budget cases. It's around, how much was it? Around 50 bucks. Uh, and it's got the hinge side panel with the little magnetic magnetic closing. And I think all like high-end cases should have this. This is like one of the best features a case can have because it makes it, especially if you like to open your PC up a lot um, or clean it or whatever, it's just so convenient. And I'll just put that out of the way. And yeah, and then it's got like, you know, normal, normal support. It's got triple 120 at the front, uh, double 120 or 140 at the top. The magnetic filter quality is a little bit lacking. Like I had, I've had these come off, um, the magnets, like I need to restick them. Probably the, the main complaint about the case is they use really crappy magnet glue. Cause this case has just been sitting. It hasn't been put in a hot area or in the sun or anything. So the, the magnet should, should hold better than that. But yeah, I have to re-glue that. Well, I'll just use double-sided tape, I don't know. No, I'll use glue. 
get that out of the way. And what else? Oh, and another cool thing about these cases, the Halia, at least most of the stuff is the same, is when you get the other side panel off, I hope this, I'm not like blocking the camera completely as I do this. When you get the other side panel off, this is like one, of, like, there's not much to do, like when it comes to side panels, like that hide the cables, there's really not much um, innovation that you can have with them. But I prefer the type of design that opens like a hinge, and normally it's it's for ex it's exclusive to high-end cases, and so it opens like that and then comes off. So you know when you're pushing cables in, like you push it on, it closes like that, like it goes in. So it's like this, and th there's like a little lip here that latches into the case. So yeah, that's another thing that. I really like about these budget cases is that sometimes you have to make a really big sacrifice somewhere and if the worst complaint apart from not being able to have the magnetic front which is more of a high-end feature anyway um, if my biggest complaint is the magnetic filters need some extra glue that's not a big deal like you can rectify that for a couple bucks um, I'm just checking the fitment here yeah it just needs to be screwed in tight like I was making sure that it's got no lip here so yeah um, pretty easy to work with case, and I, ha I haven't done an MATX build in a while, but it looks basically the same, apart from that main difference with not having the magnetic or movie bit. And it comes with just a single 120 millimeter fan for back, or is that 140? No, that's 120. Um, and there's a black version, but I went white because I haven't had a white build in ever, so why not? And Connectivity, power, reset. Uh, this is from the higher end version, but from the full ATX version, they just like reused the chassis and left the LED button there. I don't know if, you can, if that can be wired up to anything. One USB 3 and two normal USB, mic and headphone. If you ever get a case and don't know how to remove the front, normally you just pull on it from the bottom, there'll be a little bit of a handle, and you can hear that pop. But I'm trying to be a bit careful because I don't 100% trust the quality. No, it's okay. It's just normal barbs. And yeah, so normally this part here would be magnetic, this bit. I don't know why they didn't just stick with magnetic for the MATX version because that would have given it so much, like, it would go from 7 stars to 10 stars out of 10 if it had that. Like, so. When doing a build for my own tips, I feel like like I'm wasting my breath <laughs> giving tips because there's so many other big tech sites that can do it or that already you know give their own advice. But for me, once you've got the case stripped down, ready to install everything, IO panel, IO shield for the motherboard, that's like the first thing you should install so that you don't forget it. And then checking, because you'll actually have the option with some of these cases that have got the cover on the front, is to check whether you can mount the fans underneath that cover on the outside or inside and have, still have clearance. Because it can actually change, the th it can affect the thermals and, and how much air the fans can actually bring in when they're not restricted right up against the mesh. So... It could be a benefit or it could be it could be a plus or a negative depending on the case design. So let me see here. It looks like they've actually got a radiator bracket. It's really weird. I'm not like like I said, I'm not 100 percent familiar with how they've done this, but there's a radiator bracket here that removes, but it's screwed in uh whatever. Um so for example, if I was going to install a fan here, install three fans at the front, how close will they be to, will they, like, will the cover go back on? And yes, it looks like it will, and there'll be a nice half inch clearance. So this cover's actually got some good depth to it. Um, so I guess that is one good thing. And as well... 
Might I just remove this radiator bracket? Like I haven't fully looked through the manual or checked the. I just saw the general like, oh yeah, it's like a it's like a smaller Leah. So I just purchased it based on that without thoroughly double checking about like I didn't think they just change stuff on it too drastically other than shrinking it. And there's no reason they couldn't have made the front magnetic. So I'm gonna harp on about that and hopefully rack watch this video and think, why didn't we make it magnetic? Like, why would you not put an asterisk on all your sale posts saying that it doesn't have a magnetic? It's not like, it's not actually a shrunken down Halea if it's missing features that could have been implemented. Like, they would have fit just fine. Okay, so there's actually a little grommet here. So you only have to undo one side, right? So I undid two screws here. And then the one, screws in here actually are slot in, so they slot downwards, and then you can pull the radiator thing up, and it comes out like that. That's pretty cool, if you want to go water cooling. Um, but that's all I'd use it for. So you can see these, like, I don't know what they are, grommet things? Uh, can you see that on the camera? Wait, maybe I can get some light on here. Fill light. Yeah, they're like weird little grommet things. But nothing screws into them. Like, I mean, you could screw something into them to hold them steady, but they just slot in underneath here. There's like little slots behind behind this bit. Oh, great, now I've lost my... Alrighty, so I might move this camera a little bit closer because you guys are going to want to see more of the buildness. So yeah, this thing... Um, I'm not using and it also comes with a hard drive page that is held in by air another weird thing so yeah it's got a cheap PSU filter that's probably another downside but better than no filter and thumb screws for the hard drive cage Hard drive caddy, sorry, it's not really a cage, is it? It's like a sliding caddy top thing. Hard drive mount. At least it's white. So that's it there. Not using that either. And it's got a nice little screw pack. Some Velcro, oh, there's like three Velcro cable ties, four. Four Velcro cable ties for your cable management. So another thing to keep in mind is that if you've got the SSD mounts and you want to use them and you go for the fans on the interior because there's still plenty of clearance for the motherboard if I go for fans here it might block SSD installation okay it's not a huge deal again but the other thing to keep in mind is that if you install fans on the front like this is one thing I uh, happened with my last build actually if I chose to go here to have them closer to the front mesh to get more fresh air directly from the front because you don't want it recirculating any air in the case, one downside to that is when you install them, you have to screw them in from the inside. And you might think, like, what's the big deal? Like, you can still screw them in. Once you've got all the components in here and there's like a tower cooler and a graphics card, if you ever want to remove your fan to clean it, or for whatever reason a fan fails or you want to change your fans, you end up having all your build blocking the screwdriver and you end up like you have to find like a really tiny screwdriver or an L-shaped screwdriver and if you don't have one you're basically um, you're basically screwed having to remove components or take out your motherboard to access your fans because the screwdriver won't fit when there's stuff in the way when there's... so in that situation you'd actually be better off going on on the inside of the case and just put your SSDs in first if you're going to use this area and mount them like that because then you can screw them in from the front and you're not going to have a problem getting them out later. Like, And the fans that I've got, like the ones that I'm installing at the front and the top, are Arctic F12s. Thank you. 
That's how it looks. You see that? You can see the cable sticking out? Not really. You can see the one at the top, but you won't see that. See that there? So that's it there. You can see this weird bit of thermal like something, but it only comes up on camera, like you can't really see it at the naked eye, but it comes up under light. It's like the way they've soldered the socket on or something. But it's not oil, it's not oily. It's just like discoloration. So I'm just gonna put that down to manufacturing and not worry about it. So, there should be a triangle in one of the corners that is more prominent. I don't know why there's like a slight indent of a triangle in here on this side. Just let me get a closer look. I'm going to use my eyes. Yes, right there. That's just the shape of the socket. So the triangle's here in this top part. And that's all you have to line up with the CPU triangle. Little gold triangle on the CPU corner. Let's see, do we have any bent pins? No. Can't see it properly. There we go. Do you see any bent pins, guys? The little gold notch is right here. Oh, it's also got the gold notch on the underside too, like if you can't miss it. Um, <laughs> it's got it right there to show that that is the corner that goes into the socket's uh, gold notch, which I might be able to zoom in on, which I might be able to zoom in on using this magic. Oh, that's nice. see the notch it's the it's right here so if in doubt just make sure you can see the indent of the triangle and if I'm wrong I'm gonna wreck my CPU right now Sonic, right? The cable, the zip tie was like like that around the cables. There's an actual button to undo it. That's cool. It's a nice zip tie. All right, we're gonna we're gonna test this real quick. So the way these testers work is they jump two pins. You can actually see. Actually, I don't know if you can see. It's just the two pins. Um, it's actually like everything else in the test is empty. Come on, focus. Except for those two pins. That's how you, that's what that's what it's jumping. So there we go. The 
friends Finny. So we know the fan works, uh, basically. <laughs> um, it's not a full-on tester with lights or anything to tell me if there's a problem with the APX or any of the rails, but the fan works. So that's about as much as it can help with, really. Um, you could have like a bunch of fans plugged in and they'll start spinning up, but it still won't tell you if there's like an intermittent issue inside the the power supply itself. We want our fan into the GPU area. We have it facing up. We want it taking an air from underneath where there's more dust, but it's not as hot facing down. Find a way. I'll go down. And you can see here how easy that's going to be to plug, or, to plug in. So I've got the PCI wired through the ATX. It's really just a matter of dropping in the motherboard. Give plenty of room because you can pull them back through easy after. So you can see how I've done this. Cables are all in, ready to go. Should just come through completely unless there's something that's catching on. Yeah, there we go. I had to lift it, it was, it was getting caught on something or other. And it needed to be lifted a little bit and now it's flush. If there's clearance, or if as long as your cable's flexible enough, and you've gone to tighten it down now, um, try to pull it back a little bit. But sometimes it can look better, like you can look fine if you just have a little bit more cable sticking there because you don't want to like fully have your cables bending. And now the top power, which only goes one way. This is the eighth pin at the top. You can see that it goes like they connect. Um, not really connect, but they go side by side. These ones don't even have like a pad tip for connection. One thing I forgot is when you first put the motherboard in, if you know how many slots you need free on your GPU, it's actually better to remove those uh, brackets at first uh, because sometimes they're part of the case and you have to snap them off and you can actually end up scratching or damaging your motherboard if they're the type that snap off. But these are uh, luckily for me, the ones on the rear You're gonna have to do this once so, so it's not a big deal if you forget. It's just you need to be able to do it safely if the motherboard's already in there. Just need to make sure I can get that.
Alrighty guys, I had to swap camera because my first one ran out of space. So basically I put on the back plate, it's got AM4 markings on it, and you basically just gotta push the the long nut thing, like you can see what the heads look like, and they'll snap in as you push them in, you gotta push fairly hard um, for the right size. So AM4, this is for AM4 Ryzen with the Gamax. Okay, so you push those through and then it will allow you to push it through the motherboard which you have to remove the original mounting so as you can see here this is the original mounting screws and brackets and I've taken all those off so yeah remove that stuff first and then they'll push through and then you'll have a little pack with some white washers and nuts and you just push and you just put the washers on and screw the nuts on to hold the assembly together okay and then I'll just do a quick video on installing the Gamax 400 Pro itself. So this, uh, the phone I'm using now is like not very good battery life, so if this cuts out, the entire video is just going to be cut short. But hopefully I can at least get the Gamax 400 installation for those that are not sure about what they're doing. It is fairly straightforward, and I'm doing it in the case, not outside, because I like, I like the motherboard to be held steady. I don't want it moving around when I'm screwing stuff. I like my, my board to stay still. So, the only difference I'm going to do f apart from normal installation is, yeah, just use the installed dermal grease, there's probably nothing wrong with it, but because it's in a nice sealed pack, um, I don't want to waste it and open the pack when I've got tubes, so I'm just going to use a tube of stuff. So, CPU doesn't have any dust or grease on it. I've only got 70%, so I just have to make sure I don't put it on too heavy. And that's fine. So yeah, remove your fans, which is just pulling on the clips, like so. Actually, see the quality of the puller itself. Uh, the only thing you might want to worry about is your orientation if you're going to have it that way, um, for which way you're going to put it on for the fans and how it looks in the case. But otherwise, both sides look the same. Um, they have the same indents, same pattern. Yeah, it's the same on both. So, performance wise, it's not going to matter if this is upside down, but yeah, get your logo straight. And With the spread method, you also tend to get a more even layer if you take your time to put it down because any excess is going to get wiped off by the card that you're using. Would have actually been good to spread it before putting in the mounting hardware, but... Backplate on, inwards, make sure the two longer pieces are going in and you know you can tell because the shorter pieces will not reach no matter which way you put them for AM4. So then orient your cooler, make sure you make sure the protective film's off and it should line up as you put it down. There we go.
slots two and four and I also like to have my slots open because if you ever need to add RAM and you've got a big GPU cooler uh, it can be hard to access the bottom tabs so having them open at the bottom is actually a good thing if you ever need to plug some RAM in because then you can just press it in right very much clearance at all. Can't even see where it plugs in. Hitting the I.O. The backplate is literally hitting the I.O. Shit. Screw you and your big I.O. 